Proper exposures on your subject's face can make or break a great photograph. But how do you know if you have a correct exposure or not? How do you know if your fancy flash meter is accurate? How do you know if the camera's internal metering system that you use delivers accurate and consistent exposures? You're not using the back of your camera's display, are you, and guessing at exposure values? Let me show you the right way to evaluate exposures on people pictures. It's called the face mask histogram, and it has been around since photographers first got digital cameras in their hands, and it's used by many of America's top pro labs every day. It's quick, it's powerful, it's accurate, it's easy, and you will probably use it every day too. The front of the human head is referred to as the mask. And as a portrait photographer, I tend to study the mask of my portrait subjects' faces to determine what type of lighting might work best for a portrait. Now, I also use the mask of a face as a reference point for my exposure values. How about I show you a portrait setup in my home studio that shows how I use the face mask histogram to get everything all set and tested before my subject arrives. I've been shooting outside a lot for my portraits. I still use the same lights that I do in the studio, but I add a neutral density filter on the lens of my camera. That's going to get rid of the available light, and I just crank the power of the strobes up beyond that exposure compensation. Now, if you don't use a neutral density filter, don't sweat it. We'll just skip right over this. I just wanted to share it with you because you will see an exposure compensation built into my meter when we show the meter close-ups, and that's for a four-stop neutral density filter. This is my typical two light portrait setup. It features a very large main light that I use really close. That means it acts as my main light and my fill light at the same time. So I don't need a reflector. I don't need another light over here for fill. I'm good. Of course, remember, we don't use the available light either. There's no fill light coming from there. Then I'm going to use another strobe with a small strip bank on the back to light the background. Now, I've done this shot so many times, I kind of know where the lights need to go. So I'll put them in their spot. Then I'm going to do a test. I'm going to grab my little rubber-headed friend here, and I'm going to put this dummy in the exact place that my subject is going to be in when they arrive. Now, they're going to be seated today, so this is the exact height that I need to be, and it's relative to the camera where my subject's going to be too. Next, I want to get a face mask histogram to make sure everything's working so I can just shoot when they get here, right? Okay. I'm going to take my flash meter, put it under the chin, point the lumosphere. That's that white half of a ping pong ball. I'm going to aim it like a laser beam exactly into the lens of my camera. Then I'm going to take a meter reading. I'm going to set my camera for exactly what the meter says. I mean, within a tenth of an f-stop, exactly what the meter says. I'm going to take a JPEG exposure. I'm going to pull that card out, and I'm going to face mask histogram land. See ya. Okay, let's take the SD card from the camera. We're going to slide it into my card reader here. Select Photoshop, and I'm going to open up that JPEG file. There you go. It's the only one in the folder. There we go. Let's zoom in a little bit there. Okay, bring that face down. Now I'm gonna select the elliptical marquee. That's the oval shaped selection tool. And I'm simply gonna drag it across so that I get as much of the face ear to ear as I can. I wanna be sure to go under the chin. I wanna stay out of the hat, but I wanna make sure that I don't have any background whatsoever. I also don't want any clothing in there, right? Like a high collar. I'll hit Command L for pulling up levels, and look what I've got, a perfect face mask histogram. I'll just pull up the JPEG on one of my computers, bring up the face mask histogram, and instantly see that my exposures are great. I know that I've got good looking lighting, I know my color's correct, I know my exposure is dead on, and I can go back out and have a great portrait session, not have to worry about fixing anything in post-processing when it comes to tone, exposure, color, I'm all good to go right off the JPEG. I do typically shoot JPEG plus RAW just in case there's an oops, I can go back to that RAW, but do you know over 90% of my portraits are shot on JPEG and that's what I go to print with? Yeah, it's true. How did I know so quickly that that exposure was dead on? 
Hold on a second. Because of where I live now, I'm no longer in Chicago. I'm in the coast of California. I shoot predominantly white people in my studio. So I'm gonna show you Caucasian skin tone face mask histogram first. Then I'll show you what face mask histogram looks like on darker than white skin tones later on in the video. So don't go anywhere. What does it look like when you have a problem? Well, I've created a set of test files in my own studio that show three different skin tones being under and overexposed in one-tenth stop increments. You are more than welcome to download them. There's no charge, of course. Bring them up on your screen so you can see what the skin tones look like and what the face mask histogram looks like on your computer. <laughs> Let's start out with my typical Caucasian skin tones under the ideal exposure. You'll see here we've got a good looking face mask histogram. We've got a solid gap left. We've got a nice gap right. We have an even distribution of tones and we don't have any clipping. We've got a really good looking 8-bit JPEG image here that will print beautifully anywhere. Let's look what happens to not only the skin tones on your screen, but the face mask histogram when we overexpose by one tenth, two tenths, three tenths. See our gap right starting to disappear? you're seeing that data get smashed up against that right side, that wall that holds the histogram there in place. We're seeing data get pushed up up against that and crammed up vertically. That is destroying the data. It's taking our mid-tones and it's making them into highlight values. It's taking our highlight values and ruining them and making them white without detail. There is no way to recover a JPEG that's this far off. A raw file, absolutely, you can peel it back, you still will have some change, but it's not destroyed like it is a JPEG. Now let's go back to the ideal exposure. There's a good looking face mask histogram, right? Now let's underexpose by one tenth, two tenths, three tenths. Look at how big our gap right is getting, five tenths. Yep, and if we keep going, we start to get some clipping. Our gap left starts to get all smush and it's barely there. Our gap right is huge. Let's check out some of the other skin tones. Now in my studio, I keep about six different types of skin tone dummies, ranging from dark black to light brown to my typical California Caucasian skin tone, which I use most often. And then I also keep a lighter skin Caucasian skin tone just in case. Now it's gonna take a little bit of practice and that's why I've given you those practice files below. Here's the ideal exposure for our dark brown skin tone. You'll notice that the tones are shifted towards the left on the face mask histogram. Why? That's because there are more darker tones than there are lighter tones on this particular face. We've still got a gap left. We've still got a gap right. We've still got even distribution of tones and we still don't have any signs of clipping. This is exactly what that skin tone is supposed to to look like with an ideal exposure. What happens when we underexpose it? Here's a one tenth stop under, two tenths under, three tenths under. Yeah, there's no fixing this JPEG. If it's a raw, of course you could fix it, but not if it's JPEG. Let's go back to our ideal exposure. Looks great. Now let's overexpose by one tenth. Two tenths, three tenths. Uh-oh, we got problems now, don't we? Yep. We're now turning that dark brown skin tone into a light brown skin tone and that's not what we wanna have. We want accurate exposure values to give us an accurate representation of the person's face. 
And let's take a look at the toughest one I ever deal with. Remember, I come out of the advertising and editorial photography world. And before digital cameras, we used to shoot transparency film, right? Slide film. And shooting dark skin tones, like dark Indian people and Afro-American type of skin tones on transparency film was really a challenge. Why? Exposure was critical. Lighting was critical. Fill light was critical. Wow. Let's take a look at a correct face mask histogram for a dark black skin tone and that's what it looks like. Let's look at what underexposure looks like. Here's one tenth under, two tenths, three tenths, five tenths, ouch. There's no saving that JPEG for sure. Let's go back to the ideal exposure. That's looking good right there. Now let's go overexpose by one tenth. And two tenths, three tenths, four. Notice all the tones shifting towards the right. Our gap left is getting larger a little bit, but our gap right is getting smaller and smaller. We've now taken this person with beautiful dark skin tone and made them medium skin tone. That's not going to make our clients happy. Once again, use those test files below and get comfortable with on your machine. The toughest one to manage is going to be the darkest ones. You're going to need to practice. You think you're ready to give this a try? Please do. Hop on eBay, search for mannequin practice heads, and you'll see prices range from $30 to $70. Depending on size, like the larger one in the back, smaller one here, they both fit on regular light stands. And also prices do range on at what you want for hair. This one's got no hair, this one's got real hair, making them these both about $55, I think. Then what you can do is you can shoot your plastic dummies at your place, compare them to the download files, and see how well you match up with your face mask histograms and mine. Here's a couple of tips for you. You know when you're using the selection tool in Photoshop, any of them in fact, we're using the elliptical marquee selection tool. Say we're selecting this area, but what if we made a mistake and we need to move it left? Well, what you do is you keep your finger on your mouse, don't unclick. You're going to hold the space bar down and look at that. It will move the position of the selection tool. I let my finger off the space bar. I can then change the size and shape. You can do this any way that you want to. This is great for getting unusual shaped faces and also keeping stuff out of that face mask histogram that you don't want, like backgrounds. I'm pretty picky about my image quality, even on video. The video that you're watching right now has had zero post-processing to correct any lighting or exposure problems at all. It's literally straight out of the camera video. How do I manage my exposure so well? We can do the face mask histogram. We'll take a test piece of video from my shoot. I'll load it up into my editor. I use Final Cut Pro and I use Premiere. But Final Cut allows me to save the frame from the video, one frame, as a Photoshop file. And even if it's a JPEG, it doesn't matter. I can open it up in Photoshop, pull a face mask histogram. I'm good to go. I've got two people in this one portrait here, and I want to check to make sure that my face mask histograms are perfect. I'm going to go ahead and do both of them at the same time. Watch this. I'm going to select a perfect histogram there of Janet, and I'm going to hold down the shift key, which allows me to make a second face mask histogram. And I'm going to put that right on my friend Wayne. Now I'm going to pull up Command L for levels, and I get a perfect face mask histogram. It's actually measuring both of them at the same time. Now, if I had a problem on this face mask histogram, I would go back and find which one of the faces was giving me the problem. Now, also in Photoshop, depending on which version you have, there is a histogram palette that floats around. Check that guy out. Um, it's, it's okay. It gives you the same thing as Levels does. I just find it uh, a little distracting sometimes because it's going to split things up into different colors. No big deal. If you'd rather use the floating palette, go right ahead. So what's going to happen to your face mask histogram if your subject is wearing dark black glasses? Think about it. The left gap on your face mask histogram manages blacks and really dark tones, right? Well, these are black and do have very dark tones. So are we going to expect to see a gap left? Well, we're probably going to see some trouble. Let's take a look. We'll take one shot right here. 
And we'll look at the face mask histogram. Looks regular, right? Okay, well, let's do the same thing. We'll go one shot here. And notice the gap left? Sure, it's just the glasses. So don't freak out if somebody's got glasses and you've lost your gap left. While you're getting started learning the process of face mask histogram <laughs> and putting it into, easy to say, right? Into your workflow, Try asking subjects to take their glasses off just for a quick photo. Although, you know, sometimes that makes subjects a little uncomfortable if they wear glasses all the time. So use it at your discretion, okay? I know the face mask histogram technique feels a little clunky at first, but trust me, the more you use it and the more you incorporate it into your daily photo and digital workflow, the easier it will become. There are plenty of little tips and tricks that you can use to speed up that entire process, like wirelessly moving your files back and forth from your camera to your computer. It makes it really easy. I hope that there's information in this video that's helped you out. If you have any questions, would you please post them below for me? I do read these and I'll be happy to get back to you. And by the way, you want to see something funny? I'll show you the guy that invented the face mask histogram and how he launched it to the world. You ready? Sends the information to us in an easy to understand graph. This histogram reveals that our exposure is perfect. How do I know so fast? It's easy. The face mask histogram here has all three characteristics of a proper exposure. Watch this. Characteristic number one, an even distribution of tones. See how there's no big spikes or gaps in the data as it